So thank you for, for being here. It's, it's good that it's a difficult time after two days of conference and so on. Uh, so the, what we would like to do is to try to share some uh, useful tips, information and data that can help uh, uh, developers, uh, publishers and so on to understand better multiple markets and uh, most important to be successful in as many markets as possible. So yes, what we are trying to do is focusing on localization. How localization can, uh, uh, can help uh, uh, traction in the market, but fundamentally how can localization help uh, in being successful uh, once launching, once going uh, in different, uh, uh, different areas, different regions. A uh, short introduction, uh, I'm managing business development for Tumo and for Tumo is a company working in the carrier building space. So we are working, uh, why we're talking about localization first, uh, first point. Uh, for Tumo is a company that is working in every place that you see marked down in red at the moment. So it's actually 100 markets. And I'm pretty sure that's also the few white uh, spots uh, that you see on the map uh, in a uh, couple of years maximum will be covered as well. Uh, we do focus a lot, uh, uh, of course, classical markets, um, traditional markets, but our core focus has always been emerging markets. So we will talk about it. Uh, what is Fortuma doing? Fortuma is doing, as I mentioned, carrier billing. So carrier billing is uh, allowing users, so your customers, uh, to pay via their mobile phone. That means that everyone who doesn't have a credit card, doesn't have a bank account, or just uh, anyone that is engaging to the game and would like to pay right away without any friction has a possibility to do it. Uh, how do we know a little bit about localization? Of course, we are not a game developer, we are not a publisher, but uh, we had, uh, to be honest, the luxury and the, the luck, the pleasure to work with the companies that you see listed here. So we work with Google, uh, we work with Spotify, we work with Facebook, uh, uh, Sony and so on. So these companies are monetizing their users via Fortumo and that gives us quite good insights and data on uh, suggesting how to how to be successful. But, uh, as I mentioned, let's start from a uh, little bit one step behind. Let's analyze what is going on in the market uh, at the moment. So, uh, very simple. Uh, internet has been booming during the last, uh, last few years. And you can see actually the number of uh, internet users. But and we see actually, first let's we see Data is still growing, everything is going nicely, no reason to worry. Things will always continue to be as great as they are, uh, as they've been during the last years. If we analyze the data a little bit deeper, so we simply take year-to-year -year growth of internet penetration, well, that's pretty simple. So uh, the growth is uh, hugely decreasing. So if we just think about five years ago, the growth uh, is 50% lower. So, of course, new users come online, but how do they come online? So, that's the part where we, uh, we've understood things are changing and uh, perhaps some tips can help as well to understand how to uh, take the maximum out of the changes. Uh, simple point, emerging markets. So, there are some countries that clearly are driving the recent growth uh, uh, of Internet. Internet access is what actually is changing a lot once it comes to gaming as well because more and more uh, quality of games is growing. Um, size of the game sometimes is increasing as well and therefore data is something that is coming very important into the picture. So let's, if we just take a look uh, of what happened during the last uh, simple four years, uh, well, it's, it's clearly visible. Uh, there were uh, slightly more users, uh, uh, internet users in Asia than in, uh, in North America uh, in 2011, but if we look 2015, the picture completely changed. Asia Pacific, uh, Latin America, and so on, and uh, uh, Middle East as well have been booming. So the percentage of growth, uh, we are talking about uh, 10, 15 times per, compared to, uh, especially compared to classical markets. And the trend is not changing. So that's 
the most important thing. Trend is there, emerging markets are the assets will make the difference and will keep growing. And uh, if we just simply take a little bit of data, smartphones that are clearly driving consumption, growth and so on, we see two markets are absolutely dominating. One is China and one is India. So that gives a good picture and that applies also to the neighboring region because Indonesia, Philippines, uh, well, Mexico, Latin America and so on, these countries are the one taking us forward. Let's say, for example, as well, uh, what are, uh, if we think, uh, we, we can sometimes relate to something that is big and everyone knows, and that's exactly uh, one example. So if you think about the big companies, uh, that gives us a pretty good picture. So that's a picture of the iPhone SE. What was the purpose of the iPhone SE? Simply to, uh, to reach out to the emerging market to grow the footprint, to get more users in the markets that grow the most. Apple is thinking about it. Facebook is thinking about it. Why Facebook would be so worried about uh, data, giving internet to everyone, uh, to have uh, uh, very, uh, very slim versions of the products that they work with limited connectivity? Because that's the direction where we're going. And uh, here's the question. So, Clearly we see certain trends, certain dynamics, and uh, what we would like to do is to share some, some data and some insights of what we have seen. Our localization has been helping some of our, most of our partners in being successful, not just in their own ground, but uh, uh, growing abroad, and growing actually really globally. First thing, the first thing that we can analyze is, uh, uh, it's, it's very basic, it's honestly a simple point but we should not ignore it. So, language, Look at localizing the language, so of course in a game a lot of things are simple, uh, dynamic of the game, how the game is presented and so on, they are quite immediate so you don't need to understand much of the language, but in reality it can make the difference. So. Uh, we see, for example, that's just some simple basic data, and you see that in the US, logically, everyone is speaking, uh, almost everyone, surprisingly, is speaking uh, uh, English, but if you think even about richer countries like could be Italy, could be Spain or France, that doesn't happen. You need to localize. And even more, if we think about uh, India, China, Indonesia, uh, these countries, they do actually need uh, uh, some minimum localization or help in uh, driving the user towards consumption and uh, consumption of the service and actually paying later on once they're engaged. A couple of examples. So, uh, everyone probably knows Spotify, but uh, uh, Spotify is live in uh, probably 60 70 markets as we speak, but they got it right. So, they are heavily localizing in every market where they go. They do localize uh, their products. So that's an example. So that's uh, uh, Spotify's page in, uh, in Indonesia. So recently launched, and immediately they did create a service in local language. So no, no big with it. For users, it's clear what they're looking for. Netflix. Netflix, uh, again, everyone is, uh, knows Netflix, is using Netflix, uh, even if it's officially not available, but uh, it's. Uh, it's a product that is global. Of course, we see it in English, but if you look at the image on the background, that's Netflix in Japan. All the title of the movie, they are localized, because that gives also a positive feeling. So it's, it's important also to make, uh, to make clear to the users of any markets that they are important for, for you as a developer. So they need to be special. That's why localization and language, it's a small, uh, small is sometimes quite cheap uh, item, but can give a, a really big difference. Another point is pricing. So let's not ignore the cost of life. Uh, a lot of things have a different price in different places. Uh, here, what we mentioned is a so-called Big Mac index. Probably we know that uh, uh, McDonald's, the main product of McDonald's, has a different price in different countries. So in, uh, in macroeconomics actually uh, is a 
well-known parameter. So uh, economists are using the price of the Big Mac to understand how expensive is the market. It's a good tip. Uh, that can help you in localizing the pricing. Because, pretty simple, what is available income of people in a different market is completely different. So a salary, an average uh, salary or uh, gross additional income in, uh, in the market can be completely different. And of course, if a virtual item is priced the same in Norway or in, uh, or in Bangladesh, well, there, is, there are some chances that the things could be improved. So, uh, and especially that applies for, uh, for gaming. So in gaming, uh, for example, we are talking about uh, most likely virtual items. For virtual items, there is no fixed cost for an additional uh, user, for an additional item. The cost is to create the game, to have a great product. But once you have it, it makes sense to squeeze out as much as possible from the game. One way how to do that sets price localization. So some promotions, some uh, different, uh, different level of packages specifically for the market. And that really makes a difference. We have seen it with our partners how uh, just uh, decreasing the price to adapt it to a specific market has been making the revenues 10, 20 times higher. And as an example, so uh, even in uh, uh, items, content that uh, apparently they should have the same price, that's uh, uh, in the example is Avast. Avast is one of the most known uh, uh, antivirus solution. So Avast is heavily localizing the price and uh, that's a comparison between the price that you can have uh, in uh, internationally in US and the price in India. In fact, as far as I know, Avast is doing uh, fairly well also, also in India despite the price that is not so cheap apparently but is way way cheaper than it is in, uh, in other markets. The same, we need, uh, uh, here again, it refers to, to pricing, localization. We need to try to understand and to relate to how people are spending in the market. So that's uh, uh, real data. That's real data that we've been ex extrapolating from uh, our database and our partners. So you can see uh, here how people are spending. An example is, uh, so you can compare, for example, uh, Germany and Taiwan. Uh, that's the average revenue per paid user on a monthly basis. You can see that people are spending exactly the same, absolutely the same, it's in dollars. But if you notice a pattern, you can clearly understand that uh, in Germany, uh, users say do like to buy a lot in, uh, uh, with a shorter number, with a smaller number of transactions. This actually is completely different from what happens in Taiwan. In Taiwan, on the contrary, people spend the same in the end of the month but they like to buy in smaller chunks. And that's, again, a small piece of data, but it helps you to fine tune. Uh, once you're targeting a market, uh, you have the possibility and opportunity to uh, define the small things that to help you to drive users where you want to. Something else that heavily affect, uh, affects monetization, revenues, and uh, growth, in the end, if uh, there are no revenues, growth is, uh, becoming an issue is uh, availability of payment methods logically. Uh, the ecosystem, the environment is completely different if we have in mind uh, markets like the United States, uh, um, certain countries in Europe and so on, versus uh, the places where most of the world is living. Most of the world is not living in the US, so we need to account for that. Not everyone has a credit card. And that's again, it's, it's data that clearly shows it. In, uh, US, uh, pretty much everyone has a credit card or uh, uh, an e-wallet. Does it happen the same uh, in China, in India, in, uh, even in Italy? Does it happen the same, uh, uh, the same pattern? So, what, what does it mean? It's important to localize payments. So that's, uh, that's a screenshot of the payment pages, the screenshots, uh, uh, the collage of the payment pages of a company uh, that we all know is called the Riot Games. Uh, they're pretty successful as far as we know, so they probably got a figure to write regarding monetization. But if you look at uh, uh, their checkout, uh, you can clearly see a pattern. They're using a lot of payment methods. 
So in Brazil, uh, they're using, uh, of course, credit cards, because why not? They're using local wallets, they're using international wallets, but they're using carrier billing. Uh, you see, in fact, you see the logos of all the carriers in the country. Uh, they're using boletos, uh, and so on. Very heavy and smart localization. Same in Turkey. Uh, multiple payment methods and uh, especially localized payment methods where uh, carrier billing is always where, where we are actually uh, specializing is always in the top position because uh, um, everyone can pay. So that's that's important thing. Uh, credit card that you need to apply to the bank. Uh, perhaps you don't have a bank account, so you don't even have the issue. Carrier billing, everyone who has a mobile phone, even doesn't need to be even a smartphone. So fundamentally, every person who wants to play has the opportunity to, uh, to pay. At the same time, we need to take in, uh, into account that technology is, it has a different, uh, uh, different role according to market and growth at the stage of the market itself. So uh, typology of devices cannot be the same across uh, across the world, and uh, well, here China actually played uh, an important role. If we have uh, the smartphone penetration that we have now in the world, that's honestly thanks to the Chinese OEM that they've been managing to produce uh, uh, very good devices, Android devices, for a very affordable price. That sells smartphone penetration, but let's keep in mind, not everyone has the last model, so uh, in some cases we need to develop titles, games, that have capability to support uh, simpler devices, so perhaps a bit less of memory and so on. But again, the purpose is to reach as many users as possible. Another point, so spending habits are kind of different. Campaign as well needs to be different. So once, uh, uh, if we take, uh, if we take uh, uh, the globe, we clearly see that uh, not everyone is celebrating the same, same holiday. So you have uh, Europe, the United States, America, and so on in general. A lot of spending perhaps happens uh, during Christmas. And therefore, what is, uh, what is natural is to make campaigns, promotions, pushing traffic during this period. Uh, in reality, we can do things in a smarter way because uh, if we think uh, about local partners, we see that patterns we see look as clearly. We need to think through and to adapt also that. In, uh, in India, for example, Diwali is a big celebration when uh, consumption increases. Uh, then we have uh, uh, China, for example, it's very interesting to see what happens uh, on, uh, on the Singles Day. I mean, there is a huge spending. Specifically on the day, but if you don't think it through regarding China, well, it's a huge opportunity that is lost. So, uh, if, uh, if we look a little bit specifically into, into markets, where would it make sense, where we could suggest, uh, based on our experience, that would be interesting to expand as well? Uh, here we have been putting together, analyzing a bit of data, so uh, the monthly revenue per paying users versus the cost per acquisition of the users themselves. Again, at the first glance, uh, uh, what I would do is, I would just go to, uh, let's say, I would take uh, France and Germany, say you have a great revenue per, per paying user per month, and uh, simple and plain. In reality, that doesn't give the real picture because uh, France and Germany are uh, not set big countries, first of all. And then, uh, well, we need to relate that also how much is costing uh, to monetize the user. Here we can immediately see that we have markets like can be Saudi, can be Thailand, where the revenue, so the simple return of investment, you invest one dollar into user acquisition, at the moment, Let's, let's face it, based on our data, it gives much more money to you as a developer if you invest it in Saudi, in Thailand, or in Turkey, than investing it in, uh, in Germany. That's, that's kind of something that we can keep in mind as well once we, uh, we plan. So, uh, something else we have, been, uh, uh, we have been putting together, and we are publishing on a regular basis, our market reports. In our market reports, uh, we give data uh, useful for, uh, for developers and publishers regarding uh, what uh, consumers are doing in markets, uh, what's the 
what is percentage of users using Caribbean, what's the average spending per month, that's very interesting, average transaction value, and also uh, localization. So we do know which language users are, uh, are using. And that's extremely useful as well. So that's, uh, for example, Indonesia, where we see that local language is 70% uh, uh, of people are using Indonesian as a language. So English should limit your opportunities as well. Uh, then we have the data of uh, uh, average spending. So it's interesting, for example, Philippines is very interesting. On, uh, uh, on a monthly basis, people are spending $13. So it's, it's very high, and that proves the point that not just uh, classical markets are the one where to focus on. I will quickly pass through them. Uh, so here are just examples of, uh, of the data. Um, we do have our data, so if you go at fortuno.com, you can have, uh, find all the data that we have been mentioning is publicly available and it's quite interesting. So I recommend to take a look and to download our market reports. So, on my side, that's, that would be, if uh, there is any question, perhaps.